I had fun on the chapter entitled Warriors, Poets, and Scandals because you could run the gauntlet of personalities. One of the scandals involved here is a shifty Massachusetts politician who was the first volunteer major general in the Union Army. He matriculated from there to becoming the most hated individual in the Confederate States of America. Benjamin Franklin Butler earned his nickname, Beast. In 1861, Lincoln appointed Butler a general solely because of Butler's political power in the Democratic Party. Butler was a man of many parts, but not one of them, one of them was that of a soldier. This he demonstrated consistently throughout the Civil War. He had this knack of snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> His disjointed attack at Big Buffalo, Virginia in June 1861 was ludicrous. The climax of the action came when two Union regiments had a sharp exchange of gunfire after mistaking one another for the enemy. Next, and without authority, Butler issued a declaration that runaway slaves were property owned by men in rebellion, and therefore they were contraband of war, a contraband that could be legally seized and used by Union armies. The following spring, Butler reached a highlight of infamy. He was ordered to secure the South's largest city, New Orleans, which had just surrendered. It was the largest city in the Confederacy. Naturally, citizens greeted Butler with hostility. Naturally, Butler responded by establishing a dictatorial government. His appearance was in quite in keeping with his irascible personality. He was bald-headed with a dumpy, oversized body, arms and legs that seemed hinged rather than connected, <laughs> and eyes that were noticeably out of alignment. Uh, once Mr. Lincoln was holding a cabinet meeting and the cabinet members were lambasting Butler and Lincoln stopped and said, ah, gentlemen, but you must not criticize General Butler. He doesn't see things quite the way we do. Well, of course, he, <laughs> you know, his eyes are going in every direction he hardly would have. A droopy mustache, gaudy uniforms, and presumptuous manner also marked this a very unpleasant man. While the Lincoln administration sought to treat Butler with care, he was a thorn in practically everybody's side. When New Orleans citizens gathered in a protest, Butler threatened to use artillery fire against them. A man who tore down the American flag was summarily hanged. Shopkeepers who denied business to Yankee customers found their stores not only seized, but sold. Ministers refusing to pray for the President of the United States were banished to the North. New Orleans remained defiant. The women there treated all Union soldiers with contempt. On one occasion, when a group of ladies turned their backs as Butler rode by, the general said in a loud voice, ha ha, those women evidently know which end of them looks best. <laughs> a female spat at two federal officers. Then a housekeeper emptied her slop jar on David Farragut's head as the naval commander walked beneath her balcony. And that was enough for Butler. Three weeks into the Union occupation of New Orleans, he issued Special Orders Number 28, which stated basically that by women's behavior, ye shall know them. That is, any woman showing disrespect to Northern soldiers could be treated as a prostitute. Butler seemed to be legalizing sexual assault. President Davis, Jefferson Davis, thereupon branded Butler an outlaw whereby any lucky Southerner who captured Butler could hang him on the spot. When one Davis labeled Butler a cross-eyed beast, the name tag became permanent. This is just Butler's special orders number 28 actually contained more foul than bite. Thereafter, no Union soldiers were insulted and no New Orleans women were assaulted. However, local prostitutes got it, had the last say-so, so to speak, you know, was, this was not an age of indoor plumbing. Uh, you used chamber, chamber pots, uh, which were sometimes delicately referred to as tinkle pots. And so butler, prostitutes in New Orleans came to paint Butler's face in the bottom of their tinkle pots. <laughs> and several times daily, the girls fired their own shots at the general, but silently but effectively. <laughs> <laughs>